I should be recording now. Uh, we are looking at the challenge function call 2.1.x. So in this video, we're going to show the solution of how to do this challenge. If you haven't already checked it out, um, check out the you know explanation video for this and try the challenge out yourself before uh, continuing with this video and finding the solution. Um, yeah, so let's let's get to it. By the way, if you ever want to follow along with the code, uh, there's a link in the description with plain text version of this code here so that you can copy it and work along in your own sandbox. Um, all right, so first thing that we got to do is we need to understand not all of the code inside of the function, right? So far in CMU, if you've done the 2.1s, a lot of the exercises are you creating the function, the test cases are the function calls. This challenge is kind of flipping that on its head where I want you to make the function calls um, and you don't really need to know exactly how I made all of this. That being said, everything that I did here is technically unit one stuff, though I did some kind of weird things on lines uh, five and six on, I guess, actually seven, eight, nine, as well so yeah you don't <laughs> the point is <laughs> you don't need to understand exactly how this function works what you do need to know is what my parameters are what I could be potentially inputting and so if I read the comment above function draws a picture of a person at coordinates left top so I know that I'm drawing a picture at coordinates left top my first two coordinate my first two arguments when I'm uh, creating this function call are X and Y great easy enough with a seed color RGB, R, G, and B. So I'm giving R, G, and B as three different colors. I don't know if I know what seed color means. I don't know if I know necessarily what lines four through nine mean. I do know, though, that I can call this function with an X, a Y, and R, G, B colors. And you should be aware from unit one that the RGB colors, they go from zero to 255, right? So Hopefully you're only inputting numbers between 0 and 255. Um, and then once you got that, you just have to figure out, all right, 0, 0 is the first one. I want to put my next one at 200, 0 to make a kind of finished, you know, a, the next part of the image. So I'll call my function, draw a quarter at 200, 0. Uh, but then I also need to put in the three different colors. So I don't, I don't know what these do. I'm just going to put in some random numbers between... Um, 0 and 255 because that's what RGB is allowed to be. If I run it, let's zoom out. Hey, I made another image. It looks like something happened with the colors, right? They're a little bit different. Um, now, the idea is I'm not just going to give you the solution and not talk about it, right? We were in 2.1, in CMU 2.1, you're looking at defining functions to be able to reuse for things. In this challenge, I wanted to show you why you might even go about organizing your code to uh, into functions like this. So yes, we have our function definition here. The entire function lies between lines three and nine. Great. Um, and then we have all of our parameters here that we could you know, expect as input for our function left top R, G, and B, and usually you're looking for a comment to explain exactly what that function does. Um, great. The function call is usually put somewhere else in this program, or maybe even another program. I don't think we get there in this class, though. Um, usually, you know, further down in the program, you're calling the function, or maybe higher up in the program, you're calling the function. Uh, and the way that works is you say the name of the function, so the name of my function was draw quarter, and then in parentheses, you give it all the inputs, just like how circle or rectangle, star, polygon, all that good stuff worked in unit one. Uh, we just get to create them ourselves. And the reason you might want to create your own function, other than it doing different things than circles and, and stars and all that other stuff, is like in this example, I wanted to make four different, well, four images on this canvas but I wanted them to be the same image just with a couple different changes. So instead of rewriting line four, five, six, seven, eight, nine over and over and over again to make all the component parts that make that image, I can just say draw quarter, give the coordinates and the color, and then boom, it's it's taken care of. It makes it makes the image. Um 
so yeah, that's kind of the, the concept behind this. Let's continue finishing the solution. Uh, if you wanted to play around with your solution to make the colors nicer and something that appeals to you more, be my guest, right? This is, uh, it looks a little too similar to the other one. So maybe I'll go, I don't know, let's, let's make this zero also and see if that changes anything. Try running it. Uh, it's a little different. Got a black background, pink dude instead of red. Yeah, sure, good enough for me. Uh, let's go ahead on to making a new draw quarter. And I will now, let's see, I want to be at actually 0, 0,200 to have that bottom left corner. So 0, 0,200. And then, I don't know, let's try to, let's go crazy with the colors, all at 255. If I run this, okay, cool. That's a little different looking. I don't know if I like the white background, actually. Let's uh, make one of these. I don't know, 100, see if we get rid of a, have some kind of color in the background. Ooh, that's a nice color. All right, uh, we'll do one more and then we're done. We've completed the challenge. So I will now draw quarter at, uh, let's see, I wanna now have it be over here. 200, 200 looks like it. 200, 200. And let's try zero, 255 and 70. I'm just, I'm just pulling these numbers out of nowhere. Okay, hey, that's the completed challenge. Feel free to mess around and maybe, um, you know, get a color composition that you like a little bit more. But the whole idea of this was to recognize that functions, yes, we have your function, the definition, here's the name of my function, here are my parameters, where I'll, you know, what input I'm expecting. Down here, indented below the function, here's all the, the function definition. Uh, here's all the stuff that my function does. And then really this challenge was trying to get to the idea of you can call a function multiple different times and it will run the same set of code from lines three to lines nine every time you call it with that different input. Uh, and that's really like a big, powerful part of functions. Um, yeah, I think I'm done. Hopefully this was, you know, helpful, interesting.